Shanghai GDG is a very interesting、uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. I mean, this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So, if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Google Developers Live. I'm Vic, and this is Claudio. Hi.、Uh, today, we're going to be taking you through、uh, how to get started quickly using Python and the Google Drive SDK.、Uh, so we have a quick start sample.、Uh, the link、um, to the sample code that we're going to be talking about today is going to be along the bottom of the screen here.、Um, so just take a look at that link、uh, at any point throughout the video,、um, and you can see the code that we're going to walk through. Um, our goal today is to get through running this sample、mm -hmm. in ten minutes or less. Do okay, we can do、let's、that. Can,、uh, I think we can do it. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's see how to do it. So,、um, let's show my my、uh, computer here.、Uh, the first thing you you need to do if you want to、uh, write a Python application that, that in, integrates with the Drive API is to install the、um, Python client library that we provide.、Mm -hmm. um, to do it, it's a very easy command. Um, it is.、Uh, you can use easy install, which is a standard way to install、uh, Python libraries, and、uh, you pass the parameters dash dash dash, dash upgrade so that it either installs the library or upgrades an existing、right. one. So we do this.、Uh, of course,、uh, you might need、uh, root privileges. So, so I'm gonna put my password here. It's gonna download the library. I already have the latest version, so I'm done. If you don't have it and you run this command, it will just download the.、Uh, Library from the website and install it, and you'll be you'll be ready to go.、Um, to get started quickly, we provide you with these、uh, quick start samples. We have one for each of the supported languages. They will be available in the、um, documentation in our Drive SDK documentation very soon.、Uh, but the、uh, the Python one I'm going to use today is already available. This short link you,、yep. you'll be seeing、uh, an overlay. So. In my、uh, project folder, I have two files. Let me show it to you. I have、um, drive.py file, which is my source code, and、um, document.txt, which is a text file that I'm going to upload to Drive.、Mm -hmm. So let me just show document.txt. Just contains a lot,、uh, single line of text, but this can be a text file. This can be anything you want to upload to Drive. Let me show you the、uh, the other one instead, the, the py file. I have it open already. Um, it's a it's a standard Python command line sample. So today we're gonna show you how to write a command line application, not a web application.、Um, the basic difference is in the authorization.、Um, so let me show you how this works, and then we will go through the the code line by line. So let me go back to the、um, the terminal. So I'm here. I just run it with Python drive dot py. What I get. Is the first step of the、um, authorization auth flow.、Um, since this is not a web application,、um, we have no browser in the command line,、uh, so we have to manually copy and paste this link and open it in our browser to、um, uh, start the auth flow. We'll get back to this as soon as we、uh, look at the code、yep. again. So a real、uh, application. Uh, being run from the command line would do something like spawn a browser,、mm -hmm. uh, collect a token, and then store the token、um, in you know the user's home directory or、mm -hmm. something like that. And of course, a web application will just take you、yeah. to this page and handle it directly.、Mm -hmm. But this is like this is the easiest way to run the auth flow, and、uh, this is very easy to do in a command line sample. It takes、yeah. about a few lines of code, so、um, we decided to show this instead. So I got this URL. And I can go to my browser, but before I can do anything like that,、uh, we have to generate our credentials. Yeah. So、uh, the first step that we have to do before we can run the sample is to create our credentials in the Google APIs console, which is available at code.google.com/apis/console. You might probably have a project already. I have none, so I'm going to create a project. When I create a project. Um, I have a list of services that I can、um, enable or disable, and what I need is the Drive API.、Mm -hmm. So I'm going to enable the Drive API. Done. So the Drive API is, is、uh, enabled. I have to get my credentials, which are client ID and client secret. To do that, I go to the API access tab, and I need to create an Auth 2.0 client ID. 
So it's a um, step-by-step guide. I click on that. I need to specify my product name, which might be Drive Quick Start. Um, if I want, I can add a product logo. I don't have one, and it's not required. So I click Next, and I have to specify what type of application this is. So this can be a web application. This can use service account. In my case, this is going to be an installed application, which is a command line application. Mm -hmm. So I select installed application. It's not for Android. It's not for iOS. It's a standard command line application. So I create a client ID. With that, I get this box with my uh, new credentials. So I have client ID and client secrets. And I need to use them in my um, Python code. So let me put those credentials in my Python code. I, I can copy this, go back to my source here. And if you open the, the source code we're sharing, uh, we have two placeholders here for client ID and client secrets. Yep. So I can replace this, and I can replace the client secret. Of course, the client secret uh, must be secret. So remember, when you do this, don't share your client secret with anyone. And of course, when uh, as soon as we're done with this, we're going to revoke these credentials so mm -hmm. that no one can use these credentials and impersonate me in this application. Yep. So now my uh, application is really ready to run. So let's let's try again. Let's start again. So let's go back to the console. Let's cancel that and start again. Why do we have to cancel that? Because when I ran that, I didn't put my credentials first. Right. Exactly. So let me try again. So I get a new URL. I do what I said I was going to do before. Copy that, this URL. Go back to my browser and start. Go to that page. Make it bigger. Uh, this is the standard auth flow. So this is saying that the Drive Quick Start application, which remember is the name of the application I just created, is requesting permission to view and manage the files and documents I have in my Google Drive. If you want more details, you can expand it and you see that that application can upload, download, update files, and everything. So my application is basically requesting access to everything yep. on Google Drive. There are different scopes different permissions you can grant to your application. Uh, what I'm using here to make it easier is the full scope. So this application is allowed to do everything. But this, remember, this might be scary to the user. So if you don't need some features, you don't need to request a scope. You shouldn't request a scope. Yeah. So for a list of some probably better choices mm -hmm. on, in scopes, see the, uh, the link in the code that we've provided, mm -hmm. um, which goes to the documentation and talks about each individual scope that you can request. OK. Um, so I'm fine with this application. I know the developer, which is me. Uh, so I can allow access to this application. I click on it, and what I get is that code. Remember, this is the flow that you get when the application is installed. It's yeah. not a web application. In a web application, this code will be sent directly to your web application. Uh, in this case, we have a command line, and we have no web server. So I need to copy this code, go back to the app, Put it. Put the same code in my command line app, mm -hmm. and as soon as I do and press enter, my application will be authorized. What the application does, and I will show the code in a minute, is that the application will take the other file that is in the same folder called document.txt, upload it to Drive, and then print uh, all the metadata we get back from Drive on the screen. Um, it's very very rough. Not a great UI, but just a, a sample application. So I press Enter. And now the application is performing upload. And what I get back is this uh, JSON structure that is what the API returned yep. after my call. And this JSON structure has a lot of metadata information about my, my file, including a download URL, so that now users can download the file from here. Or in uh, file size in bytes. This is a very small file. It's 24 bytes. Uh, what kind of uh, document it is? It's a file. It can be a folder. It can be other type of files. Um, some labels. Uh, whether the document is in, in trash, is it, it is started, and so on. And MIME type. This is a text file, so the MIME type is going to be text plain when when it was modified, was the owner, and so on. All the information you need about this file. So the application worked. Let's yeah. see how it does what it does. We also did that in less than 10 minutes. So yeah. that was pretty impressive. But without explaining properly. Yeah, let's, let's see how we can explain it. Um, so 
the application is a Python application. It starts with some imports. Uh, you need to import some libraries to use it. So maybe basically, it's uh, the, uh, the client library you downloaded. Yeah. Uh, then we have our credentials, which are the ones we uh, took from the APIs console um, and generated them from, from the APIs console a few minutes ago. Then we have the auth scope which is uh, the type of permission we are asking uh, to the user. So as Vic said, uh, at this link, developers.google.com slash drive slash scopes, you can see all the available scopes. There are uh, more restrictive ones, and they may, might be better for your application. Then we have the name of the file we want to upload, which in our case is document.txt. And these five lines here are uh, the ones we need to perform the auth flow. Yep. Do you want to explain what this does? Yep. So uh, we offer a number of helper classes uh, with the client libraries to make OAuth easier to implement. Uh, we use one of them here, which is the OAuth2 web server flow uh, class. And all this really does is um, uh, provide a handler for making OAuth requests. <laughs> so here uh, we create the flow, and then we also get the authorized URL in the next step. And that's going to be the URL that you're going to have the user copy and paste in the, into their browser. Um, once the user copies and pastes that URL, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to you know, click Allow Access. And then uh, they're going to get a code back. Um, so the code is something else that we have to plug into the flow. So we ask mm -hmm. the, the user um, with the raw input line to paste in the code. Mm -hmm. And then we take that. And we exchange that code uh, for a refresh token and an access token. Um, once we have those, uh, those are actually stored in the credentials object. And the credentials object is what we're going to use to authorize our upcoming requests to the mm -hmm. Drive API. Yeah, um, there is something uh, we can add about this auth flow. So when, uh, whenever you go through, uh, through this flow, you get this refresh token and access token. But every time you run the application, the same application, uh, you have to go through this flow mm -hmm. again and again and again. Uh, of course, this is not what the user would expect. Right. So, uh, we can add some. We could add some logic here to store the credentials yeah. we got and reuse them if if they are already available. This is what the library does. So if you yeah. use the client library, you have a very easy way to use uh, uh, some file storage to store your credentials and reuse them when needed, and only trigger this flow when needed. But we're not doing it because yeah. it's how this this way is just easier to understand. But uh, of course, in your application, you should take care of that. And. So we used our credentials to authorize the HTTP lib object, which is what we use to send HTTP requests. Yep. And that is uh, all we need to build a drive service. So um, using the client library, what do you have to do to build a service, whatever the service is? In our case, it's Drive. But it can be Google+. Plus, it can be any other API service we have. Mm -hmm. You just need to specify what the service name is which is Drive, yep. and a uh, version. In our case, we're using uh, Drive API version 2, so the name of the version is v2. Yep. And then we pass the HTTP, uh, the authorized exactly. HTTP uh, object that we have. So that's one line to instantiate the service. Mm -hmm. And then we have to upload a file. This is what we want to do. And in order to do that, we have first to define some metadata about the file which, of course, you can somehow automate. We right. have them hard-coded here. So whatever the file is in my um, local file system, its title on Google Drive will always be my document. Its description will always be a test document. And mine type will be text plain. But of course, you should make this um, different according to what file you're passing. Exactly. And, and, and we're using a media file upload class to uh, read the content of the file from the disk. Yeah. The, uh, these two parts together, so the media body, which is the content of the file, and the body, which is the metadata, are used to, uh, to send an insert request mm -hmm. to the file's resource. So to insert a file on Drive, uh, you only need a single line of code, which is this. So you, you, call, you get the file's resource from the Drive service. The files resource has a number of methods, including uh, insert, or get, or list, or update. In our case, we want to uh, create a new file, so we call insert. And you have to pass the body of the object, in the, which is uh, 
uh, the metadata and the media body, which is the content. And then you call execute, and that's it. The last line in our file is just used to show some results yep. to, to the user. Which is what prints the Unicode representation. Yeah, the, it uh, prints the JSON, the JSON represent representation. Yeah, and if you want to see if we actually did something, we can go to my Drive account and see that hopefully my document's here. It was updated, well, modified a couple of minutes ago because we just uploaded it. It's a text document. It can be opened with the uh, Google Drive viewer, which realizes that this is just uh, uh, text document so it opens the content here uh, in this in this viewer exactly so the file is here it's called my document as you know because we uh, selected that as the title and is text contents here yeah. so let's pull up the code again and then uh, we'll go through a few ways mm -hmm. in which we could improve this code uh, for re real world use mm -hmm. um, so as Claudio said before definitely cache uh, the credentials that you get back uh, so that the user only has to run through this process once. Mm -hmm. If you want to get really advanced, uh, you could spawn your own web server in Python and then uh, set a redirect URI uh, that is like the local, the local web server mm -hmm. and then automatically open up a browser um, on the user's behalf that automatically goes to the authorization URL. Mm -hmm. And then once the user clicks Allow Access, um, they would be redirected to the local web server um, to collect the mm. the uh, code. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you do that, you have to go back to the APIs console mm -hmm. and uh, generate credentials for a, a web application. Let me go yeah. back to that. So in the APIs console, we have these credentials for uh, an installed application. Mm -hmm. um, you can have as many credentials as, as you want. So we can create another client ID, and this time say it's a web application. And what we have to specify here is the redirect URI of my application. So I don't know, this might be my application running on Claudio.com. So this will be the redirect. So I create a client ID, and the redirect URI will be Claudio.com yeah. slash auth to callback. Of course, you can change it. This is just the um, well, conventional exactly. uh, URL we have. But you can change it by going to Edit Settings. Yep. So I can say that the redirect URI might be, I don't know, redirect and yep. update it. Um, if you don't have uh, a domain to go to, mm -hmm. a valid redirect URI for installed applications is always going to be localhost, yep. um, which means if you spawn a, a you know, web browser, or I misspoke, a web server mm -hmm. uh, on the same system that you're running this command line application, you can actually redirect back to that local system. Yeah. Just remember that the redirect URI must match exactly what you have in your code. Mm -hmm. So if you have a um, specific port number, you have to add it as well. Exactly. Yeah. So if your um, a redirect URI is on HTTP slash slash localhost port 3000, you have to write it like exactly, this. Yeah. If there is a trailing slash, you have to add the trailing slash. If it's HTTPS, you have to specify yeah. it here. Of course, you can have more than one more than one redirect URI right. that is allowed. So maybe your server works on both HTTP and HTTPS. So you can add two lines and have one HTTP and one on HTTPS. And they're both allowed. Yeah. In the real world, though, unless you're redirecting the local host, you should always be using HTTPS, always, um, to make sure that the code doesn't get leaked in between. Um, you know, in tr transit back to the user. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, since we're talking about redirect URIs, um, even when you create an installed application, uh, you still have redirect URI, but that has a special value, mm -hmm. uh, which is this string here, uh, which is defined in the auth 2.0 standards. Uh, you don't have to remember it. This will be added for you automatically, and you don't have to specify it in your code. Yep. Uh, so that's just the out-of-band redirect yeah. URI, which means there's no redirect, essentially. Yeah, so in, in our code, we didn't specify it, so the default value is that yeah. it's uh, uh, out-of-band. Yeah. So some other ways you can improve this. Mm -hmm. uh, when setting the file name uh, variable, uh, you could collect this from sys.argv in Python, mm -hmm. uh, like a command line argument. Or you could prompt the user for it uh, to make the utility a little bit more useful and, and um, easier to use over time. Um, some other things you might be able to do are take some of the metadata on mm -hmm. the command line or just assume some defaults, like maybe set the title to document.txt or mm -hmm. the file name of the file. Try to guess the MIME type of the file more intelligently. Don't always set it to text plane. Um, it, there are a lot of utilities in Python to do this already. Yeah, and you, you can obviously you can use the extension to do that, or mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, way more advanced ways to do to recognize what type of, type yeah. of file it is. 
So a common question that people might have is when writing a command line program uh, to use the Drive API, mm -hmm. how are you supposed to securely store your client secret? Right? And it's not always so simple in a Python script as mm -hmm. pasting in the client secret. Um, or in, in many languages, languages actually, that's quite difficult um, to manage. Mm -hmm. So you could do something like um, store the client secret in a web application on something like Google App Engine, mm -hmm. and then have the command line application query that uh, from Google App Engine so that you're not storing your client secret here in plain text all the time. OK. Uh, okay. And, and then, of course, you can uh, make this application more useful by adding more commands. So as I said, this does insert. Mm -hmm. But you have different methods. You, all, all the methods uh, you can see on our documentation. And so you can replace insert with, let's say, list mm -hmm. to get a list of all your documents or get to get a specific document and, and so on. So Claudio, where would people find uh, documentation about that? Uh, the documentation for the Drive SDK is available at developers.google.com slash drive. Mm -hmm. And all the samples, including this one, will be available there. We already have a more complex Python sample in the documentation. That sample is for a web application that mm -hmm. uses, uses App Engine. Yep. And it's um, more complicated than this. It does a lot more. It's a complete text editor that saves and reads files from Drive. But uh, we will also add this very easy quick start sample yeah. so that you can start with something yeah. in five minutes. So we recommend that you take a few minutes, walk through, copy and paste this code, and see if you can get it running for yourself. Once you get this running, expand it a little bit, get comfortable, and then move on to the example application mm -hmm. that we provide in the documentation that Claudio mentioned. We call it Dr. Edit. It's just a full-on web text editor. Yeah. And, um, so we also have these uh, quick start samples for many other languages. Maybe in one of the future uh, GDL sessions, we might go through all of them yeah. and see how they work, how to set up the environment for um, the other languages. So right now, we have ready Java, well, Python is sitting here, and uh, PHP, Ruby, and .NET. Yeah. So we can show all of them uh, one by one so that you might learn how to set up the environment for each of them. Yeah. So we'd like to hear your feedback about uh, what you'd like to see uh, more frequently. Um, so if you're really into Java, tell us. And, and we'll do something similar to this in Java. Um, maybe someday we'll walk through the, the text editor application in detail mm -hmm. um, and show you how the code works there. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, be sure uh, to post them on YouTube. Uh, we do read those. Um, I don't think that there are any questions at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, and remember, that. anytime if you have uh, technical questions, we're uh, always on Stack Overflow. Yep. We the Google dash Drive dash SDK tag. We mm -hmm. read all the questions there, and we're very active there. In uh, um, in not only us, but in lo a lot of developers are there, and they can all yeah. they can already answer many questions. So feel free to get in touch with us on Stack Overflow, comment this video, or on Google Plus. We are also very active there. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think uh, that's it. I don't think we have any questions at the moment. Um, so yeah, just post on Stack Overflow. Mm -hmm. I guess that does it for us today. OK, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, watching us. Hope you find this useful. Yeah. And see you next time.